What's going on everybody, it's Robert Hall and in today's video we are going to talk about tethering to Capture One via the iPad. This is a new feature that is just now available, it's in the latest update of the app. I have been testing it for a little while now and I want to tell you all about it. Quick disclosure, this video was done in collaboration with Capture One. You can find links to the app that we're discussing in today's video in the description below as well as links to all of their social media, so go check that out. I assume most photographers know what tethering is, if you don't it is the process of connecting your camera directly to some form of computer that way you can either see your images on a larger screen just so that you can see things more clearly review details more closely or you are applying some type of processing to the files as they come in that way you're seeing them in a more finalized state and this is probably more common on large editorial shoots or large commercial projects or maybe even an in-studio photographer tethering requires some type of middleman whether it be a laptop computer or a desktop computer that way you can use the software to ingest those photos live and you have a hard drive to store them on and everything but today with its most recent update we have tethering directly to the iPad via the Capture One app. Now Steve he talked about in his last video how he's regularly working in studio and regularly connected to Capture One so that he can tether to his computer and see all of their visual results live. That type of system just doesn't work for me because I am never in a fixed location. I mean I have a studio but that's just not where I do most of my work. Most of my work is on location wherever my clients are. Even on days like today where I'm working for my university client, I am gonna be in six different rooms in three different buildings all around the campus. So I'm just not in a fixed scenario that would warrant tethering to some type of laptop or desktop setup. But with today's update of the Capture One app, tethering is finally in a portable enough fashion that it works for my on location workflow. So what are the benefits of being able to tether in this ultra compact fashion? Well first up you can do this with no other equipment involved. With a laptop you need some type of table for it. For a desktop you need a full on cart and an external display and wires, possibly a battery involved or even connection to a wall, right? With this, you don't need anything. You need one cable running directly between your camera to an iPad, and then you can mount the iPad however you choose. For me, I'm choosing to use a sling just to keep it over, and it also has a little hand pad that I can comfortably hold it or pass it off to somebody else to hold. The first major benefit is obviously the screen real estate, right? Going from your tiny two and a half, three inch screen on your camera to a 12 inch screen or 10 inch screen depending on what type of iPad you're using is just a huge upgrade in terms of visibility. The first benefit there is just additional clarity for you if you want to review images. The second major benefit is using the same raw engine that you would use on the desktop experience of Capture One which is widely considered to be the best raw developer. But there's one thing for certain it is way more accurate than using the JPEG previews on the back of your camera. If you've ever gotten home from a shoot and you're like I thought there was way more contrast in it, that's just JPEG preview life because you're not actually viewing the raw file on your back of your camera. You're making adjustments to a JPEG version of it that generally has more contrast and more saturation. So you're making adjustments that are in response to ways that your image doesn't actually look. If Hopefully that makes sense. But when you're viewing the raw images using the same engine that you are going to use when you go home and upload these onto your desktop, well, then you are making adjustments that are going to actually reflect accurately in your images. Now, this is phenomenal in terms of collaboration. I have tried so many different ways to allow the art directors, creative directors, account managers, any type of client to review the images as I capture them, and none of these systems have been good. I tried using the Sony Image app Image Edge, Imaging Edge, I don't even remember what it's called. Whatever the Sony app was that allows you to take a picture with your iPad, as soon as you give that control, I would lose display on my camera. So now the controls and my review is gone. When you're tethering, you still have the same experience with your camera, you're just getting this mirrored experience on your iPad. So now the creative directors that I work with can sit there and look at images as they come in and add commentary to help guide the session, which just makes things go along a lot smoother. And my experience using the camera is completely undisrupted. Another great feature brought over from the desktop experience is the next capture adjustment feature. And this is where if you make some type of tweak to your image, say you add 0.5 exposure to an image that just came in, all the images following that will also have the same adjustment. And because you're dealing with raw images here, this is really nice, especially if you're doing any type of retail experience where you're showing clients images live, because let's be honest, a raw file is a little bit meh 
I mean, they're low contrast, low saturation, right? They're designed to capture as much data as possible, not to just look visually stunning right out of the gate. So to show clients raw images, at least retail ones who don't understand the editing process, um, might be a little bit underwhelming. So if you're looking to jazz them up a little bit, you can add a little bit of sharpening, add some saturation, add some contrast so that as they come in, all the images look a little bit better. And you can also do this using styles similar to how you would on a desktop. So you can create these styles that add a lot of color adjustments to them and maybe have a more dramatic style to them. And all of this allows you that as you capture an image, it's just already closer to what it's ultimately going to look like. And now if you're wondering, well, why would I spend all these time making adjustments just to go home and then import these on my computer and then redo everything else? Well, you don't have to because using cloud transfer, anything that's on there will come home, go on to the desktop experience and just pick up where you left off. Now, hands down, one of the best things about the fact that you can bring all of this edit functionality live as you're capturing and then pick up all your progress using the cloud functionality when you get home is the fact that you can now use this app, use the features of the app to kind of fill in some of that empty space in your schedule. And I know you know exactly what I'm talking about because every photographer experiences this. We have an 11 o'clock shoot across town, 45 minutes from our house, and then we get done and we don't have anything to do for two and a half hours. And then you're in that zone where you're like, do I, do I go home? Do I drive all the way back home? Well, then I only have 30 minutes at home. What's the point of that? But with this app, having so much functionality between that capture stage and then getting home and finalizing at home on your desktop computer, for me, that's amazing because now I can call. I just had a hour and a half gap and I culled all the photos from my first two shoots today and then started recording this video before I go to my third shoot before I ultimately go home. And this is just wonderful because it's a more productive use of our idle time. Now for me this will probably largely be culling. Like you can use either the stars or the color tags and go ahead and rate your images however you see fit. But there's no reason to stop at culling. If you want to edit on this you have control of all of your typical sliders, of color adjustments, cropping, sharpening all of that built right into the app. Okay, my next shoot starts in 10 minutes, so I'll pick this up at home. Now, this whole video, I talked about tethering via a wire, a cord between your camera and your iPad, but it is important to note that you can also tether wirelessly with this new update. Now, I didn't use it at all because there are more steps to get your camera connected wirelessly, but I also, I just don't trust the reliability of a wireless system, and it's something that I need to play around with a lot more before I'm ever going to take it on a job. The reason that I liked the tethering update with a cable is because I plugged it in, it just worked, and it didn't stop working the whole time that I used it. I also think it's safe to assume that transfer speeds wirelessly are going to be much longer than they are through a cable, and I use 50 and 60 megapixel cameras, so my raw files aren't exactly small and I just didn't want it to start falling behind. But that's definitely a feature that you can check out if you think it would work well for you. So to summarize today's video, the update for the Capture One app just brings tethering in its most portable fashion to an app that is already powerful for selecting and editing images. At a minimum, the large view and the raw capabilities will allow any on-location photographer to improve the accuracy of their images. For those working with creative directors or marketing teams, the review process using tethering is way better than just using the back of a camera, and it does all this without really impeding your mobility as a photographer. For those working with retail clients, tethering can be used as a review tool, as a sales tool, or simply to get clients more excited about seeing their final images. And if if you find yourself with a lot of idle time, then the Capture One app lets you fill that time with culling and editing that you can just pick up using cloud transfer when you get home to the desktop experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and I'll catch you in the next one.